an impeccably observed minute silence here with the lone bugler playing the last post and the players will remain around the centre circle as well as the match officials as uh, a special message of love for Liam Manning now commences as we send our love and condolences to our head coach Liam Manning has been unfurled at the corner of the Dolman and the South Stands Theo John Manning Liam lost his baby son just a few days old and you'll always be City with me and Liam has now come out onto the pitch to applaud those who are showing their appreciation towards him and opposite me in the Dolman Stand fans are holding up yellow and red cards and it just says fly it's a very very poignant message and clearly very much appreciated by Liam Manning who has not been at the club for the last couple of weeks spending time with his family getting over the awful tragedy of losing a baby son at such a young age but the whole football community came out in support I actually think it was quite fitting that one of the first clubs to register their deep sadness was the club just across the city at Bristol Rovers and our sincere condolences go to Liam and his family as they continue to grieve over the tragic loss over their son and Theo John Munning that banner still flies very proud where the Bristol City fans are on the corner of the Dolman and South stands. That was beautifully done. Lovely. Beautiful. The banners and see Liam go on the pitch and give that standing ovation. I mean, that's where football is at its best. That unity. Leeds fans applaud him. Bristol City fans applaud him. Really special moment. And we're underway on Talk Sport as game day commences. Leeds United are defending the Acheo stand away to our left hand side. That's where the Leeds fans are. And Leeds are in there change strip of yellow with the blue trim on both the shorts shorts and socks Bristol City in their traditional colours of red shirts and socks with white shorts and they are attacking the Ajeo stand to our left defending the south stand to our right quickly won back by Jason Knight on halfway and he sets Naki Wells away down the right hand side early ball into the box and stretching just in front of goal was Max Burr but he couldn't connect he's about half a yard ahead of him Bristol City on the front foot very very early nil nil really intelligent run there for Mackie Wells just bends his run into that right hand channel and to be fair to Max Bird he's the one who gets up to support him and Mackie Wells I mean he, he puts it to a lovely area it bounces just on the penalty spot from that right hand side and Max Bird is just half a yard short and if he does he connects he probably scores a goal there but listen it was great play from Bristol City good start winning the ball back from Nonto high up and that's a battle I'm quite looking forward to seeing Nonto up against George Tanner George Tanner got right in his face there stopped him good battle and it was a great cross for Mackie Wells and, and unfortunate for Bristol City games underway elsewhere in the EFL at Coventry and Watford the Watford game live on TalkSport 2 right now as they take on Blackburn also games in League 1 at Mansfield and Reading and in League 2 at Colchester and Morecambe I'll keep you in touch with any goals going in in our lunchtime games and then on TalkSport 2 at 3 o'clock bit of Premier League exclusive commentary for you Manchester City Southampton whilst Adrian here on TalkSport takes you around the grounds Bristol City in possession it's fire downfield by Zach Viner looking for Yu Hirakawa who couldn't catch up with the ball before it drifted out of play on the far side of the field for a Leeds United throw Hirakawa on loan from the Makeda Zelvia club in Japan scored his first goal at Middlesbrough when they won at the Riverside Japanese youth international preferred to Anis Mehmeti in the Bristol City midfield today he's just won the ball back inside the Leeds half tucked back over halfway by Jason Knight for the centre halves and now forward comes Luke McNally 
once at Burnley had a couple of loan spells in the championship I thought he was excellent when he was at Coventry City a couple of years ago now he's a Bristol City player he's got some defending to do now as Aronson schemes his way over the halfway for Leeds United out to the left hand side and Dan James is on the right hand side Nonto on the left it's quite fluid actually the way that they have themselves set up at the moment now Leeds United have it with Joel Peru Nonto right hand corner of the area tries to get across and it's blocked by Viner and then Bogle is dispossessed at least temporarily by Ross McCrory Bogle gets it back tried to slide in Nonto down the right hand side of the box but Bristol City win the ball back and the touch then from Max Bird is a little loose but so too is the ball forward from Leeds United a couple of minutes gone three minutes gone in actual fact Bristol City nil Leeds United nil good ball in field and now Hirakawa is bursting through the middle in between two Leeds players tried to take it around Sam Byram who did really well on the cover and the ball ricocheted back to Melier nil nil yeah Sam Byram there did a really good job there but Hagwirara I wanted to see him just drive through the middle of it just keep going I mean he, he almost doesn't believe that he's got enough pace to get past Sam Byram because I think if he goes past him that extra touch that takes him pretty much into the penalty spot the only thing that happens there he gets taken out it's either a penalty and it's a red card but the fact he didn't trust in his pace there I would like to have seen him drive forward with it and maybe get a shot off but a really good ball from Max Bird just outside of his foot in that centre circle and just fed it and if you're from a Leeds perspective that was quite worrying the gap between Joe Roden and Pascal Stroy quite a big gap that's Darren Bent alongside me Ian Dante this afternoon we've got him on a bit of EFL commentary there are no 12.30 games in the Premier League today last night you heard it on TalkSport where Nottingham Forest went to Leicester City and went fifth in the table with a 3-1 yeah. win what a job he's doing Nuno Espirito Santo wow. absolutely Chris Woodham looks the goals yet again for the Tricky Trees as well Leeds have a throw midway point of their own half on this near side we're sat high up in the west stand here at Ashton Gate lovely bird's eye view the Dolman stand opposite us the south stand to our right and the Ajea stand to our left the oldest stand remaining at Ashton Gate almost a relic of the 1990s the Ajea stand but the job they've done on upgrading this stadium is superb Steve Lansdowne and the ownership of Bristol City very keen to make this not just a, a sporting venue for the Bristol Bears and for Bristol City but also to bring live events here Morecambe nil, Chesterfield 1 in lead 2 Spy rides ahead through former Spurs player Dylan Markande Morecambe nil, Chesterfield 1 that's the first goal in any of the midday 30 games around the country in the EFL balls out of play for a Bristol City throw taken quickly by Ross McCrory McNally tucks it up to halfway. Bird under pressure from Tanaka holds it up turns it around the corner lovely ball and Wells has just stolen in behind Roden darting down the left hand side of the area has to check back inside and that allowed Jaden Bogle to get his foot in and win it back for Leeds United nil nil do you know what that, that's an outlet for Bristol City because that's twice now in the first what five minutes where Anaki was really intelligent run down the sides of Joe Roden and Pascal Stroy and they can't run with him they can't live with him good that's cushion header happened. down the left hand side for Ross McCrory tries to get across and it's blocked by Bogle but he can't prevent the throw and Bristol City well we mentioned it earlier they had 18 shots on target in the, well 18 shots at goal rather in the first half at Stoke and found themselves 2-0 down they create opportunities for themselves, nil-nil. Yeah, they do, but it's quite simple in what they're doing. They're almost, it's, it's one pass forward, one little set, and then it's a little lo loft in behind for Naki Wells to get into it. And if you're lead, you've got to drop. Drop five or six yards, just not to allow that space in behind, because at the minute, it's too easy for Bristol City to play through. And they've won a corner. Max Bird just hitting the ball against Bogle at the corner flag, away to our left. So Bristol City have the first corner of the game where the West Ham meets the Acheo down to our left hand side and it's Yu Hirakawa preferred to Anis Mehmeti in midfield today is going to take this corner for the hosts right footed in swinger a lot of zonal marking from Leeds inside the six yard box two or three red Bristol City shirts at the far post probably going to make runs across the line as the corner is swung in by the Japanese youth player and he's just checking the referee James Lennington that the ball is touching the quadrant doesn't look it to me but he's nope. happy in it comes from Hirakara headed up in the air at the near post as Leeds get it half clear and then it's nodded back by McGuane but it's going to drift out of play 
for a goal kick to Leeds United. Nil nil, seven gone. And if that was touching the quadrant, I'm a Dutchman. Honestly, they're from here, and I'm, I'm a good what I'd say 50, 60 yards away. It looked like it was out of that quadrant to me, but the referee saw no no problem with it. But it's been a really good start to the game. Really good start. I think Bristol City have settled in really well. We've not quite seen Leeds on the front foot yet. But we quite clearly see what Bristol City are going to try to do. And as I said, from a lead defensive perspective, you've got to drop five or six yards because it's too easy at the minute mm. for Bristol City to get in behind you. And Bristol City have it again inside their own half. Hirakawa goes down under pressure. No foul, says the referee. Aronson almost treads on the ball over the halfway line, but keeps it away from Hirakawa. And it's not back to Joe Roden on halfway. Now a permanent signing at Leeds at that initial loan spell and formed a really good partnership last season with Ethan Ampadu at the back. Ampadu is currently out injured, so Pascal Strike is getting his opportunity. Morecambe have equalised, incidentally, against Chesterfield in League 2. Ben Tollett makes it 1-1 on the final coast. Now, his uh, ball down the left-hand side of the area, but that was offside against the Leeds United player, and so it'll be a free kick. Peru is the man that was caught offside so it'll be Max O'Leary with the free kick for Bristol City 0-0 it's really interesting what Leeds are doing down forward because when they go almost go down that left hand side where Nonto should be it comes really narrow as it attracts a load of bodies and then you can see Sam Byron trying to make that overlap trying to get in behind but I mean I would like to see Nonto stay wide and maybe go at the fullback try and commit George Tanner and try and make things happen but him coming narrow is almost inviting all the bodies into the middle of the park Naki Wells climbing all over Joe Rodan trying to win a header as the ball was smacked downfield. It's given us a free kick for Leeds United just ahead of their own 18-yard line. It's not back to Ilan Melier who had that horrible, horrible moment just a few weeks ago in the dying moments at Sunderland. And the ball just spanned past him and into the net. We've had many a sleepless night about that, I imagine, since then. But... Uh, He's had many, many appearances. What? This is 18 clean sheets last season. Getting on for 200 appearances as a Leeds United player. And he trots out to the right-hand side of his penalty area as a long, aimless ball from Bristol City comes into his path. Nil-nil. Ten minutes gone. Again, for Bristol City, their system is so fluid. I mean, I've been watching it for mate, what, since the game started. They almost go to a 3-4-3 in possession and then out of possession into that back four that four two three one it's really strange because you're almost looking at Nonto and that's maybe why he's having to come so narrow because certainly when Leeds have it it's like a three four three and you go you've got full Max Bird Naki Wells all them two really going up high and really trying to press and then they just drop into the system and it's, it's really intelligent because at the minute Leeds are really struggling to work it out Leeds have it left hand side with Byron just over the halfway line you're listening to Talk Sport in the EFL Saturday lunchtime. Nonto down the left-hand side up against Mark Sykes. It's worked back into midfield. Kept alive on that left-hand side by Byron. Now Nonto in the area finds Aronson with his back to goal. He feeds it back to Tanaka who thought about a shot of the area. Rolls it to the right-hand corner of the box and Bogle. Bogle trying to get inside Max Bird and then leaves it back for Tanaka. Chips it to the far post. Room for a header goalwards. But it was well blocked. Sam Byron got the header in, but it was blocked by Sykes. Comes out to the centre of the half, floated back in. Dan James giving chase, but even he's not that quick to catch up with the ball sent down the right-hand side of the box. And it's a Bristol City goal kick, nil-nil. Yeah, worked it really well there, Leeds. But I'd like to think on the edge of the box, someone have a shot. There was, there was a couple of occasions there. I think Brendan Harrison had it on the edge of the box. And then it went to Joe Rothwell. I mean, you're, you're 20 yards from goal, have a shot of goal. Clearly, Bristol City are defending really deep really tight really compact there's no space to play in between it or you end up trying to play that ball there that was never really on and ends up drifting out but if you're at the edge of the box have a shot you can take a deflection it might go in you knows what just to make Bristol City think I think in that instance there it was just a little bit predictable the League One leaders Birmingham City are 1-0 up at the one call against Mansfield Willem Willemsen Stop smiling, Dad. <laughs> Stop I was smiling. trying to do that deadpan. <laughs> I was really trying to do that deadpan because I, I could feel your eyes boring into the back of my skull. I said, read out that score line. <laughs> so the leaders are ahead at the one call. 1-1, one, one, Morecambe Chesterfield. No goals anywhere else in the EFL this lunchtime, including here at Ashton Gate, where we played 12 minutes. Bristol City in possession. 
Viner in the centre circle. Aronson tries to win it back, and it's Rothwell who actually takes the ball off his toe. And then Nonto tries to set James away. He'll keep it in play, right-hand side of the area. Back across the face, he got an important header up into the air by McNally. Where's that going to drop? Rothwell on the volley, steers it wide from about 10 yards out. Decent chance for Leeds United as they suddenly broke on Bristol City. But Rothwell's volley well wide, and it's a goal kick to the hosts, 0-0. Nonto gets that all wrong. If he gives a better ball to Dan James, Dan James 1v1 with the goalkeeper, he just gets a little bit too, a little bit on the pass. And that starts from Brendan Aronson winning the ball back, playing it to Nonto. But again, a simple pass, simple execution, gets a little bit too much on it because Dan James is quick, but he's not that quick. He's not going to get onto it because if he gets that right, Dan James takes one touch and he shoots or he even hits it first time. Opportunity gone for Leeds. Another championship goal has gone in. Coventry nil, Luton 1. Carlton Morris for Luton Coventry having a dreadful time of it at the start of this season and they trail at the Coventry Building Society Arena here at Ashton Gate Hirakara giving chase downfield for Bristol City but Rodon deals with the aerial ball well enough and then Pascal Strike has time to turn just ahead of his own 18 yard line and feed it out to Jaden Bogle on this near side to us as he trots up toward the halfway line forced back by McCrory and uh, Ayo Tanaka, who's been outstanding in defensive midfield. Glenn Kamara sold in the window. Injuries to Ampadu. Ilya Gruev, the Bulgarian, is out. But Tanaka, we've got Leeds United fans in the TalkSport office, and they think he's better than any of those players I've just mentioned, Ayo yeah, Tanaka. He's been very good. Con con calm, composed in possession. Always chooses the right option. Lovely way to pass as well. As he's just shown there. Exactly. Just set Bogle away, right-hand side. Early ball across the 18-yard line, but... Peru couldn't pick it up, nor could Aronson. And it's out on the right-hand side for Bristol City and a chance for Marcus McGuane to lob the ball downfield. One promotion with Oxford last year. He's overhit that ball. Got about three clubs too many on that and it's straight through to Melier. Nil-nil. Nearly a quarter of an hour gone. You can see what he's trying to do to Marcus McGuane because Naki Wells it's good movement he goes to go long and then at the last minute he drops in short to get the ball to feet but by then Marcus McGuane's head was already down so he already had it in his mind to, to put it in behind but I think that's the ball that can really hurt Leeds because at the minute we've seen it already in the first what 20 minutes the two times that Bristol City have put the ball in behind with real quality it's really troubled this Leeds back line McGuane only played three minutes so far in a Bristol City shirt before today that was up at Middlesbrough in that 1-0 win Here's Nonto inside his own half for Leeds United at 0-0. Bright sunshine now bathes the Ashton Gate pitch down beneath us as Roden gives it back to Melier, bedecked in all light blue this afternoon, the Leeds goalkeeper. Byram finds Roden about 25 yards out where the uh, rugby union markers are on the pitch. The Bristol Bears play here as well. Lovely ball from Nonto left to right to pick out Bogle on the halfway line. Moves in field. McCrory trying to track that run. In it goes to Peru. Lays it off to Nonto. Nonto could have played that first time for the run of Byram down the left-hand side of the box, but he held onto it. Gave it back to Peru. Shot blocked from 25 yards out. Now Byram gets it left wing and plays it back in field to Joe Rothwell. Rothwell takes a touch and sends it back to strike in the centre circle opportunity gone yes absolutely fantastic run from Sam Byron he was full head of steam and Nonto could have just left it in there Sam Byron was in it next cross next touch would have been a cross because he held onto it for a bit too long opportunity went Bristol City managed to get back into that tight compact shape and I think that if Leeds are going to break down this Bristol City back line it's got to be quick it's got to be sharp Bogle has got Dan James in space right hand corner of the penalty area trying to have a go at McCrory here checks his run clips it in with his left foot it's headed away by McNally comes back out and Leeds will have it once again James chest the ball down right hand side gets barged into by McCrory no foul says the referee and Hirakawa tries to bring it over halfway in slides Tanaka his compatriot and it goes out of play for a Bristol City throw nil nil 16 and a half gone on TalkSport yeah no foul there Dan James got to be stronger got to be stronger he took it on his chest and it was who wanted it more and Ross McCrory wanted it more put the challenge in and obviously Dan James went down there but that's an interesting fascinating battle I think Dan James with the pace that he's got every single time you get the ball don't worry about anything else attack him go on the outside get your crosses in now Jason Knight charging through the centre circle for Bristol City out to the right hand side Sykes looking to come in field might go for a goal with his left foot but it's a good foot in from Byram but he's come straight back 
to Mark Sykes. Right-hand corner of the box. Now trying to go on the outside of Byron. Gets to the byline and wins a corner kick for Bristol City at the Ajeo stand there. Nil-nil. Yeah, good play there for Mark Sykes. He was desperate to get the shot off or get a cross in. But it's good defensive work not allowing him to do that. But Bristol City now finally get a bit, an opportunity from a set play and lead zonal marking. I've never been a fan of zonal marking. I think you can shirk responsibility. If you're man for man, you know exactly whose man it is. This is where Ray Houghton used to say to me, space never scored a goal. <laughs> and he was usually right. But that's what Leeds are doing as in comes the corner, deep to the far post. Up goes Wells, but he won't get ahead. And it Roden with a good, strong defensive header at the far post. It's smack clear high into the Bristol sky by Jaden Bogle lands on the halfway line on the head of the defender it was George Tanner that was last man back for Bristol City Hirakawa guided back to Max O'Leary and he fires it out right to left looking for McCrory good header in field onto the chest of Naki Wells takes it really well and plays a square ball across to Sykes Hirakawa wants it out on the right wing gets it now one on one with Sam Byron will he go and take him on couple of step overs from Hirakara pulls it across the face of Golden Strike has to head it behind via a deflection for another corner kick to Bristol City nil-nil Hirakara that's what you want to see he, he almost injected a little bit of pace he took it to feet slow, take the first couple of steps and then he really went at Strike and to be fair if he doesn't get a, a block in I think it's a goal because Mackie Wells is there just behind him in a really good area the edge of the six yard box and his, his next touch is a head into the goal but really good play there from Hirakara and he will take the corner kick from the right hand side again all Leeds United players in the six yard box and two or three outside it Bristol City players coming in now and it drops at the penalty spot can it be laid off for a Bristol City player no it can't but it's teased out by Sykes to the left hand side but it won't find its way through yet now a cross comes in chance for an overhead kick said just wide wow Luke McNally up from the back tried to outdo what Lewis Kumas did when scoring against Bristol City in the week by hooking a shot goalwards with his right and it wasn't that far wide of the post. That is unbelievable. It's unlucky as well because it's all they can do. The ball's going up in the air as well. All he can do is try and hook it on. And, I mean, he's done really well because he doesn't even check where the goal is. He just tries to get something on it. And if that's on target, it's a goal. Melier's completely stranded. Have it again. The host, it's Hirakawa. 25 yards out, steps inside his man. Shot deflected and just wide. Goodness me, it came off strike again. Melier was just stood there. Statuesque, couldn't move. He'd been wrong-footed. And the ball only just went the wrong side of the post from the home side's point of view. Another corner with 20 minutes gone. Nil-nil. Taken short by Hirakawa. But it's not been taken from the right place or it wasn't in the quadrant. Spotted by the eagle eyes assistant on that far side. So the surprise of a short corner would appear to have gone. Although Sykes is still there near Hirakawa should he want to use him. But it looks like it's going to be a deeper delivery this time from Yu Hirakawa. Right footed. In it comes to the near post. Headed cleared by Peru. Only as far as Tanner, who works it out to the right hand side to Sykes. Midway point of the half. Deep cross coming in. Fired in diagonal. Up goes Melier to catch. And makes a very comfortable catch. It's nil nil. Oh, that's some throw that as well from Nonto. Good play from Max Bird. Really good defensive work. Good yeah, defensive responsibilities. Bowled it out over arm there. Did Melier sensing that Nonto could get a run on Max Bird, but the number six for Bristol City was more than equal to that. Nil nil between Watford and Blackburn over on Talksport 2. You've got a choice of championship listening this afternoon across our network. If you've got the app downloaded for your phone, it's dead easy to swipe left and right between our two championship commentaries today. Nil nil here at Ashton Gate, 21 minutes gone. Leeds, remember, with a chance to go top of the table if they win by a comfortable enough margin Sunderland are entertaining Oxford at 3 o'clock this afternoon Oxford the draw specialist to the championship at the moment under Des Buckingham and I hope he's okay incidentally Des because I know he uh, had some dizzy spells in Oxford's last game on the touchline so hopefully he's fit and firing and okay to resume full coaching duties today for Oxford in the Premier League, don't forget, Adrian will take you around the grounds at three. Villa Bournemouth, Brentford Ipswich, Brighton Wolves and Manchester City Southampton, which is our TalkSport 2 commentary today. Plenty of really intriguing stories to develop during the course of the afternoon with Adrian and the team taking you around the grounds with goals as they go in. No goals here yet as we approach the midway point of the first half. 
Bristol City have possession with Max Bird. Swings the ball in field. Naki Wells was onside. There were hands going up all around the Leeds back line, suggesting that the former Huddersfield man was offside, but not so. Now Sykes picks it up. Right-hand side, he's got Byron backpedalling. Right-hand corner of the box, floats the crossing. Chested down by Hirakawa. He was trying to tee up a teammate. Leeds can't get it clear. Shot comes back in and Melier claims it at the angle of post and bar. No corner kick. It was Wells who tried the speculative effort. And Leeds United are living on their nerves at the back a bit. Nil-nil. We're well, a little bit at the, at the minute. Joe Roden and Pascal Stroit not quite on the same page. I mean, you look at it whenever Bristol City are brutally bringing the ball forward. One will drop, one will keep the high line. And that's how they're, Bristol City are getting them behind so easy because I keep thinking well, how are they getting so much space. And that's because there's about a five-yard gap between them. And also they're on different, different lines as well. So they can't play offside. But it's been a really bright start from Bristol City, and especially here at Kawa. He's getting on the ball. He's making things happen. He's linking really well with, with Naki Wells. And Max Bird is up there supporting as well because it's almost like a we're in possession. It's almost like a fat three. Bristol City give it away. Here's Peru trying to poke it through to the area for Nonto, but it was over hit from Joel Peru. And Max O'Leary could gratefully clutch the ball at the edge of his six yard box. Bowls it out over arm and away come City on the counter attack. It's Ross McCrory down the left hand side, faced up by Bogle. Steps inside him, right footed ball into the box. It's dangerous. Well cleared by strike on the half volley for a throw in. Nil nil. Yeah, really intelligent ball there from Ross McCrory. He doesn't try to whip it in or fire it in because he knows really the only way you're going to score is along the ground. And he puts it to a really good area, but Lee's deal with it really well. And now a foul by McCrory on Bogle, applauded by the <laughs> Leeds fans who don't feel they've been getting the rub of the green so far with the decisions. They're in the Atiea stand, all the Leeds fans away to our left-hand side. And Leeds United will have a free kick. So in the championship, the only goal we've got so far has come at the Coventry Building Society Arena, where Luton are in front through Carlton Morris. Birmingham won up at Mansfield in League One. And Morecambe won, Chesterfield won in League Two. The other lunchtime games so far are goalless. And Bristol City win it back. Max Bird hooks it down the left-hand touchline, looking for Naki Wells. Roden dealt with it well enough, but that's good play from Jason Knight. McCrory works in field and rides the challenge of Tanaka. And now McGuane sets Sykes away down the Bristol City right. Tucks it back in field for Marcus McGuane. Tanner coming across from right back quite fluid Bristol City when they have possession but that's well won back by Brendan Aronson the American for Leeds United Nonto has it again in the centre circle Dan James going like an express train through the middle but not used again by Willie Nonto wrong run there was no space in there I mean Dan James was quick as anything go in the inside first and then go on to the outside and that at least gives an angle for Willie Nonto to just kind of roll it down there he almost ran into bodies and Nonto's looking at him thinking well I can't pass the ball anywhere there's too many defenders there and that's where Dan James' intelligence knowing that the space is on the outside so take the defender inside and then sprint on the outside and that gives a bigger gap enough gap for Nonto to slide the ball through Bristol City nil, Leeds United nil on Talk Sport. 25 minutes gone on game day Ian Danter and Darren Bent with you at a sunny Ashton Gate here is Ayo Tanaka Arrived from Fortuna Dusseldorf in the summer. Daniel Farker using his German contacts as he did quite often when he was Norwich City boss as well to get players over at bargain prices who he knows will adjust well to championship football. That's exactly what Tanaka has done in recent weeks. He has it again just over the halfway line down the left-hand side faced up by Naki Wells it's guided back to strike on halfway looking for a bit of movement ahead of him can't see any so he squares the ball to his right for Joe Roden Roden in the centre circle now slides it out to the inside right channel for Dan James he'll leave it for Bogle but Bogle's being forced back towards the halfway line by Max Burden Liam Manning's down there at the edge of the technical area he's fully invested in this game we wondered whether he would even be here today but it was announced yesterday that the statement he put out that he was going to be at the game today and he's fully involved, Darren Bent. Yeah, he is, yeah. He's obviously there barking orders. Brendan Aronson wins the ball for Leeds, finds Dan James, right-hand corner of the box. Early cross was looking for the run of Peru. 
but it was headed behind in the end by George Tanner coming across from fullback. Leeds have their first corner of the game away to our right at the south stand end. Nil nil. Yeah, it was the right ball from Dan James as well, cutting back onto his left foot and just trying to leave it in that area for someone to try and get their head onto it. He just didn't get quite enough, and it was good defending to be fair from George Tanner getting across there in that middle of the six yard box and heading it away, but. I think Daniel Farke he wouldn't be happy so far what he's seen it's been a bit too slow a bit too predictable for Leeds so far Joe Rothwell on loan from Bournemouth at Leeds United going to have the corner kick from the right hand side right footed out swinger away from the goalkeeper it's flicked away at the near post but it will drop in the centre of the Bristol City half and Aronson tidies up and guides it back to Bogle on halfway. he hits a long floated ball looking for Dan James and it's a good header behind by Sykes back defending this time didn't get caught underneath it ball flicked off his head away from James and out for another Leeds corner at 0-0 but that's better from Leeds because Dan James there stays on the outside and he tries to get him behind and that now will just make Mark Sykes think a little bit do you know what when that ball's coming maybe drop a little bit and whoever's on that side George Tanner yeah. or Ross McCrory when that ball's about to be played I'm going to have to drop a little bit more just to kind of mix it up a little bit from Leeds perspective it's been a bit too short a bit too safe Rothwell with another right wing corner for Leeds United hits it deeper to around the six yard line it's headed away by Sykes comes back to Aronson with a flash shot from 25 yards that he couldn't keep down I think O'Leary had it covered had it been on target it was just over his head and it's a goal kick to Bristol City at 0-0 Bristol City's last win over Leeds was September 2016 Marlon Pack was the goal scorer currently Applying his trade at Portsmouth these days, Marlon Pack. Tidy player. Neat and tidy, wasn't he? Middle of the park. Yeah, yeah. He's not having the best time of it down at Pompey at the minute. They lost last night on Talksport 2 at home to Sheffield Wednesday. And Leeds have won eight of the last nine against today's opponents. It's a brilliant record they've got against Bristol City. They've won 15 of 18 if you want to go back further. But Bristol City have given a good account of themselves so far and Naki Wells who scored twice in midweek flicks it down the right wing for Hirakawa being held up by Byram gives it back to Naki Wells on that right hand side now Sykes joins in tries to clip across in another corner Tanaka put it behind this time Bristol City have another set piece away to our left nil nil that all comes from as we spoke about earlier Joe Roden and Pascal Stroit communication they're both bumping into each other going for the same header it drops down and, and Naki Wells just puts it in behind for Hirakawa and then they get, they get a corner from it and I think that's a, a situation and certainly an element of this game where they're going to have to sort that out they've got to get on the same page as a conversation at, at half time or something because they're causing each other itself problems by getting each other space I make it five corners now for Bristol City in this first half away to our left at the Achea stand end it's going to be Hirakara again on the far side where it meets the Dolman stand to strike in the corner Sykes went up for a header but it was cleared away by the Leeds defence McGuane chasing after it and will just let the ball drift out of play for a throw but he doesn't know what option he wants he, he could have easily kept that in play but oh. he elected to roll, let it roll out for a throw and then didn't know what to do with it I would have kept it in because if he'd have kept it in he could have just rolled it down the line to Hirakawa and he had a, a 1v1 did seem odd but it is a throw to the Robins on the far side of the field with half an hour gone on Talk Sport. Nil nil if you're just tuning in to Game Day exclusive. We've got championship exclusives across the network right now. Watford Blackburn is nil nil with Alex Crook and Scott Minto over on Talk Sport 2. Darren Bent with me, Ian Danta here at Ashton Gate, where it's nil nil between Bristol City and Leeds. Bristol City have a throw, midway point of the Leeds half. Tanner looking for an option Hirakawa showing for him at the right hand corner of the penalty area it's gone into Naki Wells though gives it back to Tanner tried to get on the outside of Byram good foot in from Sam Byram so it's another throw and Bristol City let to go back to Zach Viner on halfway Tanner again tucks it in field to McGuane who's immediately dispossessed by Brendan Aronson who's done that a few times already this game but Bristol City have it back on halfway McGuane again dispossessed by Aronson although he fouls him this time in trying to take the ball off his toe and a quickly taken free kick sets Hirakawa away down the right hand side for the hosts strike is out there to engage him Hirakawa lays it back to Jason Knight oh lovely quick feet from Hirakawa right hand side Jason Knight plays it into the box oh, it's just gone the wrong side of Max Bird and Leeds can clear nil nil Hirakawa what feet 
I mean, he saw Brendan Aronson coming and he just shifted it between his two feet and he was a past him. But again, that was one of those situations for Bristol City. A little bit of quality in that final third, whether it be the shot or the pass, they're just choosing the wrong option because Leeds are giving them the opportunities. I mean, there's, there's gaps between the full-back and the centre-backs and the two centre-backs are two wider parts. So there are opportunities there. It's just, can they get enough quality together to really make one of these opportunities count? It's my first look live at uh, you here to cover and I'm impressed with what I've seen. 23 years of age can play on either flank he's playing on the right flank today balls back with Max O'Leary the academy graduate here at Bristol City good header forward from Ross McCrory trying to get Wells in behind Roden just gave Roden a little shove in the shoulder just to let him know he was there kept in play by McCrory and the referee has eventually brought play back for an offside against Naki Wells so it'll be a free kick or is it for the push on I think it's for the push on Rodan actually not an offside no I think it's a throw on but you know I like those little cheeky ones just as the defender's about to clear it just give him a little touch on his back Whoop. So, <laughs> little touch on his back so he's off balance because I, I don't think I don't think it's a foul I think it's because it came to the bottom of, of Naki Wells studs and it goes out for a throw in good there play go. though I don't mind them a little bit of dark arts don't see the of tricks of the trade from Talk Sports <laughs> Darren Bent and we all thought he was such a nice yeah. guy <laughs> Lee's bringing it forward with Rothwell up to halfway squares it left for Byron now Dan James who's gone across to that left hand side he's swapped flanks with Nonto for the minute Peru lays it back into midfield for Rothwell now Nonto picks it up inside right position Bogle outside of him wanting it on the right wing but Nonto's moved in field swings it out left to Byron left hand corner of the box right footed ball in deep to the far post Bogle with a header into the side netting angle was very very tight for Jaden Bogle but he got his head to it all the same and that's as close as Leeds United has come in this first half 12 to the break 0-0 can he hit the target from there could he do better with that he probably can but I just think he runs out of space I mean it's a, it's a great ball by the way from Sam Byron he really puts it in there and it's a great intelligent run round the back post by Jaden Bogle no one picks him up and I think maybe he just goes a little bit too early because I'm thinking could he hit the target I don't think he could have done but it's a great opportunity there from Leeds there's a change being readied uh, down beneath us and I think Mark Sykes has gone off and Carl Naismith it's Carl Naismith who's coming on it's actually Ross McCrory forgive me who's gone off he must have injured himself when he was making that strong run down the left hand side Ross McCrory and so Carl Naismith is going to come on to replace him now made his uh, 50th appearance for Bristol City having joined from Luton Town had spells at Pompey and Wigan so he's gone into centre half now does, Sykes has come out to the left hand side there's going to be a bit of a reshuffle here for personnel wise for Bristol City this could unsettle them a little bit Darren Bent yeah it could yeah they're a really fluid system uh, that's one thing that's impressed me in this first half is that they all know exactly what they were doing in possession out of possession now all of a sudden they've got to kind of shuffle the back a little bit I don't think too much will change and I think from watching Liam Mann inside as well they pretty much it's almost like a structure every single player knows exactly what they're doing in any position so I don't think it'll unbalance him too much I'm just trying to see whether it's going to be a back three whether it's going to be McNally Viner and Naismith in a three and then Tanner and Sykes would play as wing backs what Bristol City have done is they've won another corner corner number six at the Acheo stand then but this time it's the near side to us where it meets the west stand so here are Kara again he thought about taking a, a quick short corner to Sykes who's close by but he decides against it again zonal marking from Leeds in their six yard box although there's a few more red shirts inside that six yard area this time in it comes from Hirakawa good delivery on it headed up in the air by Peru out to the edge of the box brought down <gasps> by Tanner but he's lost out and oh. Dan James the fastest man in the park is away sprinting into the Bristol City half tries to give it to Nonto and they make an absolute rick of it and Bristol City win possession back and in any case I have to say Marcus McGuane is doing really well to keep up with the road runner Dan James nil nil that is about Marcus McGuane because he sprints it a lot of people in that situation would have given it up because it's Dan James he's very very quick but Marcus McGuane is almost like he made it his mission to get back and get an opportunity but here's Leeds again this time with Rothwell getting across him from the left hand side he's won a corner he thinks he should have more he thinks there might have been a handball in there but corner kick is the call from James Lennington 
and action swings from one end to the other. Nil-nil. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, Brendan Harrison is calling for the handball, and I quite like the fact that, yes, it struck the arm, but it's not handball. I mean, the defender in that situation is trying to make a last-ditch challenge. He's off balance. He goes to ground. It hits the, the arm that's behind him. What's he supposed to Short do corner. It? Nonto going to drive it for goal. Great save by O'Leary. Plunging away to his left-hand side. Great hit from Nonto. Well dealt with, but Leeds still have it. Byron, right-hand side. Wins a corner off Max Bird. Super hit from Willie Nonto, but a great save to match it from Max O'Leary. Nil-nil. Yeah, great save, but also there Bristol City weren't switched on. So the short play, short kind of corner goes to Willie Nonto, and he's got the freedom of the box, really, and he bends it. It's a really, really good save from just inside the penalty box from Max O'Leary. Coventry City, nil. Luton Town, two. Now, Elijah Adebayo adds to that Carlton Morris opener for the Hatters. Corner kick to Leeds United at nil-nil. With eight minutes to the break, Rothwell, right-footed out swinger, up go the heads, Rodham with the header straight at the keeper, bounced in front of O'Leary, made the save easier. Good contact on the header from the centre half, half a yard either side of Max O'Leary. That could well have been one 0 Leeds United. Yeah, really good header there from Joe Rodham. Gets up really well, powers it down. It's a great corner, in fact, from Joe Rothwell, the out swinger. I mean, as you said there, if it goes either side of the goalkeeper, it causes him a problem. I still think he saves it because there's not enough pa- power on the ball. Now Hirakawa trying to back into Tanaka two Japanese players in direct opposition there for a moment ball drops on the halfway line and now Sykes who's playing out of the left hand side winter free kick as he was bundled to the ground by Jaden Bogle it does look like a three at the back to me Darren Bent you know uh, with Tanner and Sykes as as wing backs I mean you would expect a Liam Manning team to be flexible tactically but that's uh, even the way the game started I was looking at it and I thought oh, okay they're playing the back four then in possession it goes to a three four three then back into out of possession it goes back to a four and it's been really fluid and that's why it has been quite hard to work out but I think now he's gone with Cal Naismith at the centre half and, and gone with a three and Naismith drives the free kick into the edge of the area it's cleared away by Leeds Nonto will try and lead the counter attack there's red shirts back but Nonto driving through the centre circle tries to slip it through to Dan James who gets in front of goal but another brilliant stop from Max O'Leary who blocks it with his legs and then Nonto absolutely clatters into a Bristol City player Jason Knight I think yellow card for Nonto for the challenge but seconds before that Dan James was played in by Nonto but Max O'Leary came out to narrow the angle and block it and it stays nil-nil. Fantastic save, but that's the movement I'm talking about from Dan James. He doesn't he doesn't crowd the space, he stays wide and that allows Willie Nonto to drive with the ball and just roll the ball in between the two centre-backs and if Dan James, by staying wide, he can then come onto it and he does that and to be fair, Max O'Leary does really well. He almost protects his box, comes out, makes the, the angle really, really narrow and Dan James can't get enough to lift it past the goalkeeper but obviously that's the best opportunity we've had this first half but that comes from... Dan James staying wide not not closing off the space too early it's getting towards towards 10 years since Max O'Leary made his debut for Bristol City 130 odd appearances since he came into the side in the 2015-16 season only a couple of clean sheets this season but he's very much in the mood to protect his goal this afternoon stays nil-nil on talk sport we've got five minutes to half time here at Ashton Gate on game day exclusive Adrian taking you around the grounds at three o'clock in the Premier League and key games in the championship member Sunderland are the leaders they are at home to Oxford United this afternoon Burnley will go top with a win over a second bottom QPR if Sunderland lose QPR no wins in eight and no clean sheet in 17 I think it's a worry for the hoops of London it's a worry for them West Brom, five without a win. I saw them draw with Oxford last Saturday. They're at home to Cardiff, who I saw win convincingly on Tuesday against Portsmouth. They're doing all right with uh, Omar Risa as their interim coach. He wants it permanently, that job. Bristol City with a free kick into the box. Comfortable claim for Melier. Elsewhere in the Championship today, incidentally, Sheffield United back-to-back defeats. A Stoke go to Bramall Lane. And Plymouth, who lost three of their last four, but they've got good home form facing Preston, who were four and beaten themselves under Paul Heckingbottom, their newly installed manager. Ball's back with Joe Roden for Leeds United, just ahead of his own 18-yard line. Squares it for strike. Hirakawa goes across to close down the space and start a press. It's back with Melier, clears left-footed. 
goes high into the sky will that stay in play on the far side it will Viner wins the header he was always going to win a header against Nonto and that's the <laughs> biggest mismatch of all out there this afternoon isn't it and he's there again although high foot from Nonto that time he's better be careful Willie Nonto because he has been booked for that yeah. agricultural challenge just a couple of minutes ago on this near side nil nil yeah he's got to just toe the line a little bit and I'm sure one or two of his teammates you know Pascal Stroit the captain would love to say to him listen just calm yourself down I mean the tackle down here as well I mean he didn't need to make it yes probably Jason Knight made a meal of it by jumping and then doing the roll but just be careful be smart if you can't win the ball then just don't go anywhere near it that's Darren Bent you can hear alongside me Ian Danta here on commentary Leeds have won it back Peru slides it down the left hand side of the box for Aronson being held up by McGuane gets to the left hand corner of the area Nonto there in support uses him Nonto now up against Tanner looks to jink inside two players does brilliantly but then across comes Viner and smacks it downfield anywhere will do for Bristol City as we edge towards half time nil nil really nip and tuck this game from a def- gate. For a defensive standpoint, Marcus McGrain's been outstanding this first half. Even that situation there where uh, Nonto's got the run in him, he gets himself into positions where he's not out, he's not outpaced. Get, just gets in between the lines, blocks up space, doesn't allow the ball to go in behind into the front plan to Joel Peru, just kind of masks that kind of area there. And he's been outstanding. And we saw earlier with Dan James absolutely motoring forward. He was the one player chasing him down and it didn't allow them to have an attempt on goal. He's been brilliant. For those that missed it earlier on TalkSport, you and Adrian Durham were talking about Marcus McGuane's stock and where he's been and where he's come from and the age he's at 25 this is the point in his career where he really should be making a regular impact well, this certainly is the, at this level well this is the level that he, this is the standard that he set this first off from a defensive standpoint mm-hmm. is that he's playing against one of the best teams in the division he's not allowed himself to be overawed he's got himself into really good positions defensively to allow not to allow Leeds to play through them and when he's had to obviously on transition when they've lost the ball he's been that one who's been getting after people getting back into position and I, I think he's had a very very good first half I really do Reading have taken the lead against Bristol Rovers in League 1 Ruben Sellers is working a few miracles there because it's, wow. it's never easy off the field these days at Reading but they are 1-0 up at the select car leasing in League One so Luton 2-0 up at Coventry no goals elsewhere in the championship lunchtime kickoffs, including here at Ashton Gate where we've got a minute of normal time to go in this first half Birmingham 1-up at Mansfield in League One as you've just heard Reading 1-0 up at Bristol Rovers and in League Two the only goals we have have come at the Globe Arena Morecambe and Chesterfield 1 apiece you're listening to Talk Sport. Game day. Manchester City Southampton is our exclusive Premier League commentary at three o'clock this afternoon with Mark Wilson and Perry Groves at the Etihad. Here at Ashton Gate, we're about to find out how much minimum stoppage time we're going to have at the end of this first period. Nil nil the score. Strike for Leeds United. Sends it out to the left hand side for Byram. Now Nonto. Oh, he skips past Tanner like he's not there, then comes in field, Willie Nonto. Diagonal ball into the box. Again, it's over hit. He's got an amble in his boot this afternoon, Willie Nonto. He's trying to hit these through balls and crosses, and they're just over hit each time. Claimed by Max O'Leary on his six-yard line this time. Nil-nil. I mean, he's cutting in and putting in a, a cross, but he's aiming for Dan James. Now, Dan James is not the biggest. If you're aiming for Joel Peru, you go, OK, fair enough. That's I can understand that. But by trying to whip it in at that height to the back post of Dan James, I mean, he's going to get out-jumped anyway. So it's going to have to be the perfect cross for him to get any kind of op- opportunity on goal. That Reading goal has been ruled out, incidentally. It stays nil-nil at the select car leasing against Bristol Rovers. As you may have just heard from behind us from the stadium announcer, we're into one minute of minimum added time here at Ashton Gate with a score at nil-nil. And Leeds United have a throw, which Jaden Bogle's going to take. It's about 20 yards inside Bristol City territory, goes back into his own half for Roden. Now strike, goes out left to Sam Byron. Nonto again, directing operations from the far touchline. Back it goes to Rothwell. And back to halfway and strike. Referee's whistle's going to go any second now. Have Leeds got time to create something as they're in possession? Bogle goes back to Rodon, and there goes the three blasts of the referee's whistle, and we reach half time at Ashton Gate and warm applause around the stadium because Bristol City once again are giving as good as they're getting at championship level as they're trying to get in touch with the playoff pack. Leeds, who can go top of the table if they get a hefty enough win here have been on the back foot at times the way Bristol City have come forward the best chance of the game though came to Leeds Willie Nonto with a right-footed 
blaster of a shot from the edge of the area superbly saved down to his left by Max O'Leary but it's on as even at half time of the championship here in the West Country it is Bristol City nil Leeds United nil Ian thanks very much Darren Bent how will Leeds fans be feeling because they've had most possession they've had that best chance as Ian's just described they've had more chances than Bristol City but I don't it feels to me like they're not quite doing enough Leeds United no they're not and it's been a bit predictable Wade I mean they're, they're playing almost a little bit one tempo they're allowing Bristol City to get back into shape um, I mean you look at some of their best opportunities was the, the one the shot from Willie Nonto which was a quick corner which caught Bristol City out and it was the run from Dan James where he starts wide and that allows Nonto to play the ball through to him and then Max O'Leary makes another really good save so they've been their two best opportunities but they've almost allowed Bristol City to get back into shape and then they've almost got to score the perfect goal to be able to break Bristol City down but it's been a really kind of strange kind of performance from Leeds this first half and Daniel Farker certainly for the first 15 minutes was sitting down and then I think from, from then he's been standing up barking orders because clearly he's not happy from what he's seeing from his side I think from a Bristol City point of view they're, they're probably coming off and the fans are happy and it's nil nil. they're not being done by Leeds but are they paying Leeds too much respect remember we were saying before the game how midweek for example Bristol City 28 shots in their game Leeds 24 those are the top two shot takers in midweek Bristol City have had one sorry three shots one on target Leeds have had eight three on target I mean is that enough really when you compare that with the stats from midweek no it's not especially when you see some of the situations they've got themselves into because they've won the ball back quite high up to be fair they've, they've managed to press Leeds and get the ball back quite high up in, in Leeds' half but it's that last little bit of quality and there have been times where they're on the edge of the box and I'm thinking just have a shot just try something a little bit different but they try the extra pass where it's not really on or they go wide I mean it was a great situation there where Hirakawa he drives through and he has a shot and it just gets blocked and goes wide but if he'd have looked five yards to the left Max Bird had made a a 60 yard run if he rolls it to him Max Bird's one on one with the goalkeeper and who knows what could have happened but I just feel for Bristol City at the minute in that final third they're not picking the right option and when they do pick that option they're not doing it with enough quality in terms of Leeds when you look at the 11 that they've got out there some of the names in there they should be we're talking game changers here players who might consider themselves too good to be in the championship but they're not proving that right now well do you know what, hey, there's a couple of them out there that are playing like that as you just said that they feel like they're being hard done by, by being in the championship and they should be in the Premier League well performances like we've seen that first half is not going to get you to the Premier League you've got to dig in you've got to go back to basics you know what I mean? play fast take chances play play with a little bit more freedom because there's times where you've got like, even Billy Nonto who I'm a big fan of he gets players 1v1 he opts to pass it backwards Dan James has got all the pace in the world pace to burn and he makes that the, the, the the, the wrong run where he's run into spaces where it's just not really on if he stays wide like he did for that opportunity he'd get he'd probably have about three or four of them every single game but he just at times he's just choosing the wrong option not using his brain but I think second half Daniel Farkle might make changes he might give it five ten minutes but I expect it if it's the exact same as he showed first half I think he'll make changes Leeds will want to win because they want to go top of the table Bristol City will want to win because they're at home and in, in good form and they want to turn draws into wins so both will want to win so at least one manager has got to say to his players Darren at half time you've got to start taking risks you talk about you know checking back going sideways they've got to start taking risks with the ball not ridiculous risks but attacking risks yeah they do 100% because they're not they're not defensive risk or ones weird but that could hurt you the other end we're talking about having a shot from distance if you're near to the box and there's no one ahead of you have the shot or if there's no one in front of you and you've got the ball on the left or the right put the cross into the box put it to good areas like from from either team make the other team defend ask questions of the other team and then then eventually you'll get into your rhythm but at the minute they're just they're turning away opportunities where you think when a game's this tight and this cagey it might take something special like a shot from distance or someone to, to take someone on and create something for you to, to take the lead so I think from both sets of players and both managers they'll be saying to them their, their players listen we need a little bit more Former England striker Darren Ben for the time being thank you very much let me give you the uh, half times elsewhere Bristol City nil Leeds nil live and exclusive on TalkSport. And on TalkSport 2, it's Watford nil, Blackburn Rovers nil. The other game in the Championship has got goals. Coventry nil, Luton Town 2, uh, it's just like last season. Clinton Morris from the spot, Elijah Adebayo with the second. Um, so Luton 2 nil up Coventry. I said before the game, challenging times for Mark Robbins. Before this game started, there were six points worse off than at this stage last season. They didn't have a great start last season and recovered well. 
but they started the day in the bottom three. It looks like they're going to stay there. Two nil down to the Hatters at uh, half time Coventry City in League One couple of games Mansfield nil, Birmingham 1 uh, Willem Willemson uh, on the break Keshi Anderson set him up and he poked home Mansfield nil, Birmingham City 1 and Reading nil, Bristol Rovers nil. Dance was spot on Reading had the ball in there but disallowed for offside uh, just before half time so it's goalless uh, the SLC and League 2 Colchester nil, Salford nil. And Morecambe won Chesterfield one on loan from Blackburn. Dylan Markande scored another goal for Chesterfield. A deflected effort. Ben Tollett's header has brought bottom of League 2 Morecambe level. So that's Morecambe 1, Chesterfield 1. But in our live game on TalkSport, Bristol City nil, Leeds nil. Remember, a win by two clear goals and Leeds go top of the table. Second half to come on TalkSport. At Betfair, we're about finding different ways to play. Like with our 90-minute guarantee. We've all been there. The clock ticks over into 90 minutes, and then a speculative cross into the box ricochets off a knee and goes in, ruining your bet. But with Betfair's 90-minute guarantee, if your bet is winning at 90 minutes or full-time, we pay out. Betfair. Play different. Applies to match odds 90 market or markets with the 90 icon. Sportsbook exclusive. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. <laughs> Sounds like someone just made a delicious order and got himself some tasty credit back. Because when you sign up to Deliveroo Plus Gold, you get even more member perks, like 10% credit back on restaurant orders over £30, which collects in your app so you can spend more on what you love. Genius. Sign up to Deliveroo Plus Gold today and start living that plus life. Subscription fee, geographical restrictions, service fees and terms apply. Partner eligibility applies. See delivery.co.uk slash legal for details. Sam used to worry about rising energy prices, but not since fixing his tariff. Instead of spending hours looking for deals, he just relaxes in the shower, singing rather badly. Because with a British gas fixed tariff, you're protected against future price rises. And if we release a cheaper fixed tariff, you can switch to it absolutely free. Search British Gas Tariffs. Eligibility and T's and C's apply. Where can you get the latest breaking sports news delivered with the laser-like accuracy of Michael Van Gogh? Oh, no, and hear passionate opinions debated with the confident dexterity of Virgil Van Dyke. Oh, Liverpool fans celebrate. Answer on the radio show that's got the nation's sports fans buzzing like a Van de Graaff generator. Early breakfast with Shaban Ahern. Weekday mornings from five on Talk Sport with Adrian Flux Van Insurance. Insurance for the individual. Search Adrian Flux Van Insurance to find out more. Did you own or lease a diesel vehicle between 2009 and 2018? You may have been misled about your car's high emissions, which means you could be entitled to significant compensation due to higher fuel costs and lower resale value. BMW, Ford, Citroen, Volvo and Peugeot drivers. Find out if you're eligible at carclaim.co. Check multiple cars for free and get a decision in 30 seconds. You've got nothing to lose. The deadline ends soon, so start your claim today at carclaim.co. I just can't believe it. This time tomorrow, you could be a millionaire. Get your lotto ticket for tonight's draw. The National Lottery. Rules and procedures apply. Players must be 18 or over. Mmm, delicious free McNuggets. What? Oh. Collect enough points on the McDonald's app and you can get items for free. Bet they taste better when they're free. Let's have one. Fine, go on then. But just one. Sign up on the My McDonald's app and turn your points into much-loved items for free. 18 plus, earn points on menu items. Redeem points on selected items only. Serving time supply. Only via app at participating restaurants. Terms apply. Game day. Bringing you another weekend of electrifying live football. What a finish. It's goal time. That's it. Game day exclusive on Talk Sport. I'm Adrian Durham, live at the Amex for Brighton against Wolves in the Premier League, which kicks off at three o'clock. We're going to bring you second half commentary very shortly of Bristol City nil, Leeds United nil in the championship but Premier League this afternoon Villa play host to Bournemouth Villa currently the best team in Europe Arsenal were beaten by Bournemouth last week should be a good game at Villa Park we'll be there on Talk Sport Ipswich yet to win this season drawn four lost four they go to Brentford whose home record is fantastic one four drawn one lost none Brighton take on uh, Wolves today here at the Amex Wolves yet to win this season and Man City Southampton is live on Talk Sport to a win for City and they go top. Remember, Arsenal Liverpool play tomorrow. Alvin Martin is at the G Tech for Brentford against Ipswich. How are you doing, Alvin? 
Yeah, very well, thanks. I had lovely, lovely, lovely ground. It is. I really, really love that ground. It's one of my favourites. But you have to say, this looks like a home win. When you look at the stats, Brentford's unbeaten at home, Ipswich yet to win this season. This looks like a home win, doesn't it? Well, it certainly does, Aid. I think, uh, you know, Brentford, uh, well, especially at home, have, uh, have made this somewhat of a fortress. And um, obviously with, uh, with Ipswich struggling, uh, they, they haven't lost games. They haven't come and they haven't been that far away in, in, in the in the games that they've played. I don't think they've been mauled as such, which sometimes you see, don't you, with newly promoted sides. But it's turning those performances into results and wins. You know, the draws aren't enough for them. Um, I think they retain a bit of confidence. I think there is a... Uh, just a, a real modicum of confidence in the um, in, in the Ipswich side still, eh? but look, it's a big game, and I think uh, one thing is for sure, they're going to have to be ready from the start, because we all know about how quick Brentford are in getting to their stride, so uh, I think the, the Ipswich side uh, that plays today, I think it will feel it can get results here, and I think uh, when you underestimate them, which uh, you know he's been saying that he, they won't do for Thomas Frank, I think that's that's going to be their biggest weapon. But it's not what Thomas Frank says in, in there. It's the players. I think you know the Brentford players maybe come out and think you know we're we're so strong here. We've got a great crowd behind us. We're, we we feel that we you know, we'll get the job done today. And it's that little bit of taking your foot off the pedal sy- syndrome. Uh, if they if they do that five percent, then uh, then Ipswich will, uh, will certainly take advantage of it. Just want to bring in um, in the conversation about Ipswich the Man City Southampton game live on Talksport two at three o'clock. And, and we're all expecting Manchester City to win the game. Saints yet to win this season. They were leading 2-0 last week, lost 3-2. And recent results in this fixture have been Man City 4-0 winners, 5-2 winners, 6-1 winners. You know, you can't really make a case for Southampton getting anything at the Etihad today. Russell Martin's been interesting this week. And he's talked about the level of criticism that Southampton and he himself have faced compared to others. And he said uh, it's really interesting, the difference uh, the scrutiny and criticism of Southampton seems to be heavier than anyone else of those four teams that's down there. And obviously Ipswich are included in that. And they had a big spend, second biggest net spend in the summer, Ipswich Town. And uh, do you think he's got a point there, Russell Martin? I think he, I think he, he's, it's understandable that he gets frustrated, Adrian. Look at, look at Russell Martin and Keenan McKenna and the jobs that they've done uh, and the way they've... They've got, I mean, especially Ipswich, uh, have got their teams, their clubs into a position that nobody would have envisaged two or three years ago. I mean, obviously, Southampton have, have got a, a recent history, but, you know, with, with Ipswich, it, it's incredible. You know, I, I think what it is with Ipswich as well, they come into the, the, the Premier League. I know you spent the, they've spent money, Adrian, but I think they've spent money on the future, just not just coming into the Premier League. So they've got a long-term plan. Um, but... <laughs> When, when, a, when a manager like Keenan McKenna, for instance, does as well as he's done, he surprises so many people so many times, they come into the Premier League and you think, you know what, we, we've got no right to expect them to be able to survive in this level. But he's done it before, so he'll do it again. And everybody is sort of buys into it. And then when it doesn't happen, you know, I'm not saying it won't happen, there's still plenty of games to play, but it, there's a coming down. Well, maybe he's not as good as we thought. You know, it's... Mm. it's, it's it's that black and white in football, isn't it? There's no grey areas. That's the way the fans see it. But uh, look, I, I understand that Russell. Some people say, "Well, he's only got one way of playing." Um, I, I love that. I love that style. But I well, think uh, you know he has he has got a defensive side to him as well, and maybe he has got to hone on it on that a little bit more. Well, they're both uh, looking for a win. Let's look ahead to more Premier League action with Sky Sports. Stay ahead of the game on TalkSport with Sky Sports. Stream Sky Sports Big Weekend, including Everton versus Fulham, live today. Available with no contract on now. Search now sports. 18 plus between our internet terms apply. And Alvin, it's a very quick one on the 5.30 game. Everton, Fulham. Everton unbeaten in four. Two successive clean sheets. Dwight McNeil playing the best football of his life. They're suddenly on a roll, Sean Dyche's side. Yeah, and I think they'll fancy this Fulham game today. You know, uh, it's a different place, isn't it? Now, Goodison Park at the moment, Adrian. Uh, you know, eight points uh, on the board in the last four games. So, roll on. You've got to give credit to Dice. He is somebody that, when uh, when you ask questions of him, he stands up to be counted, and his players have. Everton Fulham is at five thirty. That was a look at the later Premier League action. Don't forget, you can stream the biggest Premier League games available with no contract on now, like Everton Fulham live today. Search now sports. Stay ahead of the game on TalkSport with Sky Sports. Stream Sky Sports Big Weekend, including Everton versus Fulham, live today. Available with no contract on now. Search now sports. 18 plus, stream via internet, terms apply. Uh, when it's out, at around about quarter two, we'll bring you the Premier League team news on TalkSport. But teams are coming out for the second half at Ashton Gate. Bristol City nil, Leeds United nil. Here's your second half commentary team on TalkSport. Darren Bentony and Danton. 
Thanks once again, Adrian. Players back out here at Ashton Gate. More of the pitch now in shade as the sun starts to get a bit lower in the autumn sky. Leeds in their second season back in the championship after those three years in the Premier League. Bristol City, one of those teams who are getting a little bit marooned at this level. Ten years in succession as a championship club. And Liam Manning, the latest manager to try and get them closer to the playoff pack. They've never been in a playoff in these last 10 years since they won promotion back from League One. Eighth was the best finish they've managed in that decade. We're back underway with Bristol City in the red shirts and socks, white shorts, attacking the south stand to our right. We're sat high up in the west stand. Brilliant bird's eye view of the action here. Leeds in their change strip of yellow with blue trim. They're kicking from right to left as we look towards their fans, the travelling contingent in the single-tier Acheo stand, away to our left-hand side. I'll run you through the lineups in a minute as Luke McNally hits a long ball four, but strike for Leeds, gets his head to it. Bogle brings it down neatly on his chest and fires it down the right-hand side, asking Dan James to give chase. But Cal Naismith, who came on as a first-half substitute, deals with that well enough at the back. And the ball drops on halfway. Good header. Good strong header from Jason Knight. Might drop for McGuane. But then he clips Ayo Tanaka. And that is a free kick for Leeds United. So for Bristol City, O'Leary in goal. Now looks like a back three of Viner, McNally and Naismith. With uh, Sykes and Tanner as wing backs. McGuane, Bird, Hirakada, Knight and Wells further forward. For Leeds, Melier the keeper. Bogle, Roden, Strike, Byram. Tanaka, Rothwell, Nonto, who's been booked, Aronson, James and Perot. Darren Bent, who's been busy signing match attacks <laughs> and uh, autograph books in this half-time period. You've been a popular man in this last 15 minutes. Make sure you tell Andy Goldstein on Monday and Drop, because he'll be so envious. Oh, no, I'm good. No, no, you know me, Dan, so I'll just keep it quiet. You know what I mean? I'll just say, no, no, no one was there. I just said hello to a couple of people. That was it. You know it'll wind him up. <laughs> Ball headed clear by Zach Viner for Bristol City. Drops on halfway. Strike cushions a neat header down to Tanaka. Lovely turn. Lovely turn and ball across the halfway line to pick out Jaden Bogle. who's moving at pace towards the edge of the area. Bogle's going to go for goal, but it's collided with a couple of Bristol City players and the ball is brought away, at least temporarily, but Leeds win it back. Strike guides it out to the left-hand side. Peru will keep it in play on this near side. Faced up by Tanner. Level with the edge of the area. Nonto plays a 1-2 and schemes his way down the left-hand side towards the dead ball line. Again, he's got two Bristol City players watching him. Back he goes to Rothwell in midfield. Rothwell chips the ball to the far post. Up go the heads. It's cleared away by Bristol City. And Bird lobs it over his head towards halfway. Roden will climb comfortably above Hirakawa. But then the ball's volleyed downfield by Jason Knight. It comes off the back of Sam Byron and goes out of play for a throw to Bristol City. Nil-nil, and we've played nearly three minutes of the second half on TalkSport. Yeah, n neither side's really changed. Obviously, Bristol City looks like it's going to be a 3-4-3 with uh, Hirakawa, Naki Wells and Max Byrne almost occupying the back four for Leeds, which is a 4-2-3-1. And they say about systems make, make fights, styles make fights, and it's, mm. it's been that way a little bit, to be fair, because in transition, I really think with those three up top with Max Byrne, Naki Wells and, and Hirakawa for, for Bristol City, there are space there, because Sam Byram and Jaden Bogle, they push really high, really, uh, push really high forward really quickly. And every single time there's a bit of a transition Bristol City win it back they just try and feed it down that channel that they've, they've left unoccupied and that might just be a way out and an avenue out for Bristol City Nil-nil here Chesterfield back in front of Morecambe in lead two Darren Oldacre makes it Morecambe one Chesterfield two early in the second half there keep you in touch with the lunchtime scores around the EFL there's no lunchtime Premier League game today but we do have an exclusive commentary at three o'clock for you that is Manchester City against Southampton at the Etihad and we'll get team news from around our Premier League reporters once we get to what about five or six minutes from now really when it comes to team news Adam Bridge at Villa Park Ian Abrahams at the Amex and Ollie Klink at the GTEC as well as Mark Wilson who's your match commentator at the Etihad today for TalkSport 2 leads in possession halfway 
Leeds fans making all the noise at the moment away to our left the ball's floated looking for Dan James on the right hand side but Bristol City deal with that well enough it's hooked up to halfway Bogle tries to send it back downfield but McGuane plays a neat one too and he's just caught on halfway by Tanaka as he tried to get away it wasn't seen as a yellow card offence by referee James Linnington but a free kick nonetheless to Bristol City nil-nil yeah, Ayo Tanaka's got away with one there because McGuane, who's quick, is away. He's got us a really, really intelligent play there from Max Bird, who just lifts, licks it around the corner, and Marcus McGuane's away. But as again, he, he's striding forward, and I think, I mean, there's a yellow card. He had to book him because there's no one that took his time, didn't he? He, he did take his time. Much quicker with the yellow card that he gave to Willie Nonto in the first half. So that's two Leeds players in the book. Tanaka joins Nonto, and Bristol City have a free kick. No more than five or six yards inside Leeds territory, out on the left-hand side. And Sykes is going to leave it, I think, for uh, Bird to hit this. Leeds holding a very, very high line from this free kick. 25 yards out, really. It's sent diagonally to the right-hand corner of the box. McNally tries to head it into the area. Melier goes up with the, the other defender, Naismith, who come forward. And actually came off worse there. Melier, he was fouled. He's very slowly picking himself back up. And the referee says, just play on. Wasn't enough to award a free kick. I would like Bristol City to change the angle of that free kick because, as you said, their leads were so high that it, was, it would have had to have been an unbelievable ball to get someone in from there because you're talking about, what, they're, they're 10 yards in. Uh, well, it was on the 22-metre line for the rugby pitch, wasn't it? it That's it, how far out they were defending. And I, when you consider that the free kick was a good five or six yards inside their own half, they're really compressing the play. Yeah, I would like them to change the angle, move it just once, and then that will make Leeds maybe make a decision. What do we do? Do we change the angle a little bit? Do we drop? They'd have to drop Leeds mm. if we change the angle. But when you do that, you almost let them off the hook by just putting it in there and hoping for the best. Tanner flicks the ball down the right-hand side for the host, but Leeds win back possession. Tanaka floats the ball neatly out to the right-hand side for Bogle, who can really stretch his legs and get into the Bristol City half sets James away on the overlap pulls it back in front of the goal Nonto cleared off the line by Viner brilliant clearance off his own goal line with O'Leary beaten and Nonto is denied again nil-nil that is Dan James at his absolute best he stays wide he doesn't condense that space and he's almost telling Jane and Bogle pass the ball in there Nonto again tries to dart down the left hand side but Tanner slides in and gives away a throw that they've taken quickly leads Rothwell left hand side knocks it back towards the halfway line and strike straight out to the left wing and Sam Byram has it now for Leeds United Aronson in support the American faced up by Jason Knight gives it out to the left hand side just kept in play by Byram who was a little wrong footed by that pass initially lovely ball from Aronson to find him again and then infield from Byram to Tanaka Tanaka up to the edge of the area Peru with his back to goal feeds it into Aronson's feet Aronson goes for goal and it brushes the side netting on its way wide there were a few Leeds fans behind the goal and behind our commentary position who thought that was in no goal kick nil nil yeah but I mean that really good play there from Leeds but that opportunity there from Willie Nonto that comes from Dan James doing his best staying wide not condensing the space and he's almost saying to Jaden Bogle play the ball between the centre back and the, and the full back and I'll use my spa space to get in there because Luke McNally and Mark Sykes on that far side they can't live with him he's got too much space and he puts a great ball across that six yard box and Joel Pirro he can't get there but Willie Nonto does and it's unbelievable defending I think it was Cal Naismith who clears it off the line but great defending and that's Leeds playing quick being inventive and making Bristol City think about their defending I'm pretty sure it was Zach Viner actually who got the the important touch on the line but it's all semantics it stayed out and it's still nil-nil on talk sport down the left-hand side, Naki Wells trying to win a corner off-road and he's done it. Good work from Naki Wells. Didn't have much room to work in and just tried to engineer the corner off the least defender and he's done that. Nil-nil here. Nil-nil on TalkSport 2 in our other lunchtime championship commentary at Vicarage Road where Watford and Blackburn are waiting for the breakthrough. Luton 2-0 up at Coventry and it's another corner for Bristol City who won six, I think, in the first half. And it's Max Bird to take this corner from the left-hand side at the corner of the Dolman and South Stands. Again, zonal marking from Leeds in part along their six-yard line. Sykes has come short in case it can be rolled to him at the edge of the area. The referee spotted a bit of pushing and shoving inside the area and he will not allow the kick to be taken until he's spoken to one or two individuals. 
who he's got his eye on, one of whom is Zach Viner. I think he's looking at the attention he's giving to Joe Rothwell and vice versa. Now we can have the corner kick taken. It's along the deck, comes out to Naki Wells. It was a one off the training ground, but he couldn't wrap his foot round it enough. And in fairness to Pascal Strike, he read what they were trying to do and closed down the space enough to stop Naki Wells getting a firm shot on goal, nil-nil. Yeah, difficult opportunity there for Naki Wells. Not only is he getting away from goal as well, so his weaker side as well, his left foot, and he can't wrap his foot around enough to get a, a decent strike on goal. So, I mean, really good play, but just I don't think it was... It, it, well, O'Leary was being pushed by Dan James, who tried to win the ball off him. Naki Wells should be plenty motivated today, let's face it, for a former Huddersfield and Bradford player mm. to be up against Leeds United today. Two goals last week as well, or two goals, sorry, in this midweek. Week, in midweek. Yeah, he's, he's full of confidence as well, two good finishes as well. I know the second one was maybe a little bit fortunate, but still you've well, got to be there. it was presented to them by the Stoke centre-half. If you're not there, if you're not there, you don't score. If you don't buy a ticket, you don't win the raffle. Isn't that the phrase? I, I thought that was the phrase, because I couldn't think what it was. I thought I was leaving. Well, I'll beat you to it. Yeah. <laughs> Three goals in eight this season for Naki Wells, including those two at Stoke. Over 550 club appearances and over 200 for Bristol City. And they're coming forward, and it's Wells trying to get on the end of a through ball, but Melier calmly out to the edge of his area and just stroked it downfield left-footed. There's a Leeds player down in the centre circle, but play continues. It's not a head injury. Aronson now getting to his feet. Bristol City have it with George Tanner meantime on this near side, the right. Wells lays it off to Knight. Knight will give it back to Viner on halfway. Clips it down the right-hand side, seeing that Wells have made a run. It's intercepted. The try again from halfway, Bristol City. Tanner heads it down. And then Bird, oh, he tried to slip it through to Wells, but it was just over hit and it trickled through to Melier at the edge of his area nil nil we played 11 minutes of the second half more changes being readied by Liam Manning back in the dugout this afternoon for Bristol City and it's going to be George Earthy that's going to be on shortly for the hosts he's a left winger on loan from West Ham United hasn't made a start yet but he's already made five appearances it's his first loan out from the Hammers and he'll be on sooner rather than later. Meantime, Leeds United at 0-0 have possession. We'll get team news in a minute from our reporters around the grounds for the Premier League 3 o'clock kickoffs, including our TalkSport 2 exclusive commentary at 3, Manchester City against Southampton. Elsewhere in the lunchtime games, it's still 2-0 Luton at Coventry, 0-0 Watford Blackburn live on TalkSport 2. Mansfield nil, Birmingham 1 in League 1, Reading nil, Bristol Rovers nil, but Shakai Ford has been sent off for Bristol Rovers in that game of the select car leasing, though it stays goalless. And in League 2, Colchester nil, Salford nil, and Morecambe 1, Chesterfield 2 of the latest scores. Strike for Leeds, heads the ball clear from just ahead of his own 18-yard line, but then Bristol City tenaciously win it back and then give it up almost as soon as they'd worked hard to get possession. Bogle hits a long ball down the centre of the field, Dan James moving after it and he barges into O'Leary at the edge of the area having wrestled clear of the attentions of Carl Naismith referee says play on and here comes George Tanner for Bristol City Hirokaro made a run on his outside he picks it up now the Japanese youth player checks onto his left foot tries to send across it it's a poor cross comfortably blocked by Sam Byron picked up by Bristol City on the right hand side here is Jason Knight coming in field, runs into Pascal Strike, and Tanaka will clear and find Nonto, and Leeds will try and break Nonto. Can he keep it in play? No, he can't. It's out of play for a throw. Let's get team news from the Premier League at Villa Park with Adam Bridge. First Premier League start for John McGinn in a month. One of two changes for Aston Villa from the team which beat Fulham last weekend. He replaces Bailey. Carlos is out. Concer comes in. As for Bournemouth, Kepper is injured. So Mark Travers makes a second Premier League start of the season in goal. That's one of four changes from the win over Arsenal. Christy Clivert and Unal come in Scott Tavernier and Avanilson drop out double change being made by Bristol City whilst we're doing that We'll get team news from the Amex. Talk Sports Ian Abrahams. Headline team news of Brighton is Danny Welbeck is fit and starts. Evan Ferguson's dropped to the bench. Hinchelwood's injured. Igor drops out. Van Hecker, Estupinian and Mitoma all return. One change for Wolves. Tommy Doyle into midfield for Andre. It's Brighton and Wolves at the Amex. Thank you kindly. Uh, the double change that's been made. We mentioned George Earthy coming on, on loan from West Ham. He's coming for Marcus McGuane. The other change, Sinclair Armstrong, who came through 
at Queen's Park Rangers and has moved to Bristol City. He's replaced Naki Wells like for like, Darren Bent, as their furthest forward player. Yeah, Naki Wells done really well. I mean, he put a real shift in, really fought against those two centre halves of Joe Roden, Pascal Stroit. Didn't really get probably the opportunity he was looking for, that, that chance on goal. But I think he'd done a lot of good work in, in certainly in the time that he was on the pitch. Bogle, right hand corner of the area for Leeds. A bit of twinkle toast from him and tried to thread it through to Dan James, but it's got away from him and gone behind for a, a goal kick. Morecambe 2, Chesterfield 2. Morecambe have just equalised in that game, so they've come from behind twice in that game at the Globe Arena. Let's get the team news from the GTEC Stadium in the Premier League. Ollie Clink. Six changes for Ipswich since their loss to Everton. Outcome Wolfenden, Morsi, Burns, Jack Clark, Liam Delap, and Amari Hutchinson. Income Harry Clark, Kajust, Ogbene, Smodic, Hurst, and Chaplin. As for Brentford, there's a return to the starting lineup for Johan Visser. He's one of two changes. Roslev also comes in. Thank you, Ollie. They've missed Johan Visser since he's been out, got clattered into at Manchester City after he'd given them the lead. I think it was Kovacic that. Um, putting a rather nasty challenge on him and they have missed him so it's a big plus for Brentford this afternoon we'll get team news from Manchester City Southampton shortly Mark Wilson's our man there up at the Etihad meantime at 0-0 here with an hour gone on talk sport Ashton Gate leads coming forward with Brendan Aronson out to the left hand side closest to us and Sam Byron level with the edge of the Bristol City penalty area Nonto rolls it back for Rothwell in it goes to Tanaka Nonto again just trotting his way towards level with the edge of the area, looking to make room for a cross. Byram's in support, moves infield, but won't cross it. He's being pressurised all the time. Here's Nonto again to the left-hand corner of the area. Now he knocks it back for Tanaka in a bit of space. Could have a shot. Does have a shot. Deflected wide. Corner kick leads United away to our left. Nil-nil. Yeah, Tanaka there. That's what I'm talking about. He, he didn't want to shoot at first, but he just took that extra touch and then thought, do you know what? Why not? I'll have a strike at goal. There was no one to pass through, no space. As we fair, Cal Naismith gets his body on the line, stands firm and takes it in the chest and it goes out for a Leeds corner. But that's what I'm talking about. Taking responsibility. When you get an opportunity on the edge of the box like that, don't try and pass it on to anyone else. You're there, you've got a free shot on goal. Have a go and he does that and he's out inside the corner. Coventry 1, Luton 2. Coventry get a goal back through Ellis Sims at the CBS Arena in the Championship. Corner leads United on their right-hand side to be taken by Joe Rothwell. Onto the six-yard line and header over the top by Sam Byram who came flying in but just couldn't keep it down. It's a goal kick to Bristol City so let's get that Manchester City Southampton team news from your match commentator on TalkSport 2 Mark Wilson Good afternoon Dan uh, Manchester City make three changes from the Premier League win at Wolves last weekend Akanji, Nunez and Foden come in Stones, Gundahan and Doku drop out two changes for a Southampton side that threw away two goal lead against Leicester Stevens and Lalana are recalled a Sugawara and a Rebo drop out Perry goes alongside me live on TalkSport 2 from 3 o'clock at the Etihad for Manchester City against Southampton and we'll get some EFL team news for you at two o'clock as well from our featured games that we have for you during the course of around the grounds with Adrian Durham on game day live from three o'clock here. Mansfield have equalised against Birmingham City 1-1. Lee Gregory, great free transfer signing from Sheffield Wednesday makes it 1-1 at the one call. And Salford City lead at Colchester. Kelly and Mai makes it Colchester nil. Salford one for Carl Robinson's men. Aronson for Leeds, trying to find Dan James with a through ball from the left-hand side. Intercepted. And Bristol City bring it away. Hirakara not strong enough on halfway. And the ball rebounds into Leeds United's possession. Too much on that from Peru. Allowed Naismith to get a foot in. And the ball's cleared downfield, but only as far as Sam Byron we had that header from that corner kick Darren Bent that we just mentioned that went whistling over the crossbar yeah got up too early I mean it's a great delivery really really good de delivery from Joe Rothwell and, and Sam Byron he, he wants it more than anyone but just gets up to a fraction early but I'm, I'm looking at Daniel Farker and wondering if he's thinking about a change I mean he hasn't really made it well he hasn't made any changes yet and I just think at the minute Joel Powell is not offering enough he's not holding the ball he's not having any opportunities on goal his, his movement's quite lethargic I wonder if maybe Patrick Bamford maybe is an option off the bench. The lesser spotted Patrick Bamford, not exactly been blessed with a, a whole load of minutes so far this season for Leeds United, number nine, but he is amongst the substitutes. Mana Solomon there as well, uh, once off Fulham. And Joe Gelhart, a young striker. Matteo Joseph, a lot of responsibilities seemingly was going to be placed on his shoulders at the start of the season. 
Yeah, do you think Joel Peru's, he's, Peru's kind of been on the, the fr- fringes of the game, hasn't really offered enough. The ball's going into him, he's not holding it. He's not really been a threat, he's not been a target. So I'm just wondering if Daniel Farkas is looking at that thinking that that's maybe an option because I think Aritzen's looked sharp and so's Nonton and so's Dan James. And here's Byram at 0 0. Left hand corner of the penalty area, up against Tanner, goes down. And the ball ends up just dribbling over the dead ball line as both players hit the deck. No foul given, so it's a Bristol City goal kick. Just over 25 minutes to go on Talk Sport. Game day exclusive from the Championship. We are your home of the EFL. I'm proud of that fact. Bristol City nil, Leeds United nil. Leeds United know that a, a decent win here would take them top of the championship table for a couple of hours at least before Sunderland are at home to Oxford and Burnley take on QPR the two teams also jostling for top spot at the moment Leeds trying to win the ball on halfway hooked away by McNally for Bristol City up goes Naismith beat Dan James to the head of Bird nods it down for Earthy Earthy getting his first involvement really in the game since coming on as a substitute uh, has had uh, the ball taken off him by Ayo Tanaka and it's out of play for a Leeds throw on the right hand side and there's still as Darren Bench rightly mentioned a whole load of Leeds United subs warming up away down to our left hand side uh, left hand side in front of their own supporters but nobody's been called back yet and that's, what keep, that, and that's what I keep looking at because Dan James I think second half looked razor sharp so is Willie Nonto so is Brennan Amundsen. but I just think Joel Peru he's been the one up top who's not really offered hardly anything to be honest so that's why I'm looking at maybe a change of centre forward change of personnel some of them maybe a little bit more bit more, a bit quicker a bit more dynamic Reading now have taken the lead they had a goal in the first half ruled out for offside but Sam Smith has put them ahead at the select car leasing against Bristol Rovers in League One nil-nil on Talk Sport here at Ashton Gate as we approach the midway point of the second half Tanaka for Leeds swirling ball into the area from the inside left channel looking for Dan James but it's won back by Bristol City and Armstrong turns and powers his way over the halfway line and he's clipped by Jaden Bogle and that's going to be a yellow card I'm sure it is indeed for the Leeds United fullback as Sinclair Armstrong went through the gears and was hurtling his way into the Leeds United half 0-0 I mean that's the only way we were stopping him and to be fair a little bit cynical a little bit of dark arts again Jaden Bogle knowing that full world this could be dangerous here because as Sinclair Armstrong's driving with it I think Hirakawa makes a really good run as well Max Bird is to the left so he probably thinks you know what I'll just take the foul now take the booking for the rest of the team but again now if you're if you're a Bristol City certainly on that side Max Bird or Jason or even Sinclair Armstrong face up Bo- Jaden Bogle you have to go at him now you have to make him think make the referee make a decision so a free kick to Bristol City about 10 metres into the Leeds half Bird diagonal ball to the right hand corner of the box it drifts over the head of McNally he thinks it's come off a Leeds head for a corner but James Lillington the referee disagrees and it's a goal kick to the visitors Bamford has now just come back to the bench but he's not coming and Matteo Joseph is he's stripped and ready and will be Leeds United's first change when the ball next goes out of play he's just gets some finding instructions is Joseph balls with the Leeds goalkeeper Ilan Melier plays it to his right for Roden and in fact in fairness it's not just Matteo Joseph who's coming on this a double change for Leeds United Manor Solomon's also going to be brought on meantime Bogle for the visitors gets up to halfway. Tanaka in support it's rolled back to Roden in the centre circle plays it to his left for strike now Sam Byram on the left wing gives it back to strike it's a poor pass strike has to go 10 yards back into his own half to retrieve the loose ball so Leeds have to start again here's Tanaka finding Rothwell on halfway he can scamper into the opposition half plays it out to the left wing for Byron could have hit a first time cross decided to check back onto his right finds Rothwell in field back it goes to Byron once more now Tanaka gets his head up decides not to cross from deep instead it goes back out to Sam Byron on this left hand side very patient from Leeds United but there's no cross yet and still Tanaka holds on to the ball as the two lead subs wait to be introduced strike just ahead of the halfway line has the ball at his feet plays it back up to square for Roden Bogle in bags of space over on the far right hand side of the field police but he's not being used 
Colchester 1, Salford 1. Colchester equalised through Harry Anderson with 20 minutes to go at Colchester in League 2. Still goalless at Ashton Gate. It's so flat from Leeds. I'm just watching Leeds and it's, like, it's almost like a training ground exercise. Mm. It's possession, keeping the ball. They're not really making Bristol City think they're just kind of shuffling across from side to side, plugging holes, space. There's no real space to play between the lines either. And to be fair, Tanaka's has got his head up and he's looking, thinking, well, can someone make a run or do something different? That's Darren Bent. You can hear alongside me, Ian Tanta here in the West Country. Ball's going to play for a Leeds throw, but before they take it, they're going to make those two changes to bring on Matteo Joseph for one and Mana Solomon who's on loan from Tottenham Hotspur for their second and the players coming off well, I think it's Joel Peru who is coming off to allow Joseph to, to come on and as you said earlier Darren Bent he's biding his time a bit too long maybe Daniel Park with these changes and Dan James the other player coming off to allow the other substitute Solomon to come on so a double change for Leeds Peru and James off and coming on in their place Joseph and Solomon yes yeah, so it, it maybe has, hasn't come early enough as well but also I'm quite surprised Dan James has come off because this second half he's looked really sharp he's mm -hmm. probably caused one or two of their best moments their better moments but I mean now he's, he's made the changes now you expect to see Leeds now on the front foot more dynamic more runs in behind Sam Byram onside inside the area flicks it across the face of goal and straight away Joseph with a header at the near post steered over the crossbar he's been on the pitch a matter of seconds and very nearly put Leeds United ahead 20 to go 0-0 nil -nil. good ball from Sam Byram there but it's a hard finish there from Matteo Joseph because he's got the defender on his back as well it's not a lot of pace in the ball it's almost like a loopy cross and he's got to generate the power and he's going away from goal again but again that's a positivity positive Matteo Joseph making that run to that near post trying to get his head on it and that's what Leeds need just to up the tempo a little bit Joseph who scored three goals last season a couple so far this is his dad is Emil Heskey's cousin, if I remember rightly. Ball given away by Bristol City. Solomon down the inside left channel for Leeds. Cuts in field. Then gets to the edge of the area. Aronson in support. Rolls it back to Rothwell just outside the area. Rothwell goes for an ambitious left-footed strike. It's blocked away. Didn't really have much power on it. And then the ball goes trickling under Manor Solomon's boot and behind for a goal kick to Bristol City what about their level amb of ambition Bristol City for these final 20 odd minutes Darren Bent well they've got to stop defending on the edge of their own box you'd have to say try and find a way of getting up the pitch to support Sinclair Armstrong who's done well since he's come on but it's the last 5-10 minutes Leeds have just upped it a little bit and they've started to push Bristol City back and that's what you don't want to do be camped on for the last 20 minutes on the edge of your own box you've got to still be brave still get Hirakawa up the, up the, the pitch alongside Sinclair Armstrong get Max Bird up there as well because when those guys have combined they've really caused Leeds problems but just this last 5 to 10 minutes they've allowed Leeds to kind of up it dominate possession and haven't really got an opportunity on goal yet so they're going to have to be a little bit braver you're listening to Talk Sport Saturday afternoon game day exclusive from the championship Bristol City and Leeds United locked at 0-0 and it's the same over on Talk Sport 2 where Watford and Blackburn wow naturally that's changed Watford have just taken the lead a penalty from Edo Kayembe has made it Watford 1 Blackburn 0 live on Talk Sport 2 let's get the team news from Turf Moor elsewhere in the championship Burnley QPR John Dunn's there Second place, Burnley making two changes from the side that drew midweek at Hull, Humphrey and Loren coming in for Lucas Perez and Hannibal. QPR second bottom claimed a home draw with Coventry in the week. Two changes for them as well, Ashby and Sato for Paul and Dembele. At Turf Moor, Burnley and QPR. Ball's back with Jaden Bogle in front of his own penalty area for Leeds United. Morecambe 2, Chesterfield 3. Chesterfield have taken the lead for a third time at Morecambe and James Berry has the third goal. Let's get the team news from the Hawthorns. West Brom against Cardiff. Jeff Peters. Three changes for West Brom who haven't won in the past five. Ratchet, Swift and Johnston return in for Malumbi Fellows and Grant Bartley and DK still missing. Cardiff out the relegation zone. Three wins in four. They're unchanged but still no Aaron Ramsey. Balls out of play for a Bristol City throw. Level with the edge of the Leeds penalty area as Melier was forced to come to the edge of his area and head clear 
with Sinclair Armstrong bearing down on him. Yeah, that was better though. That was a really good ball from Zach Viner. He just saw the run of, of Sinclair Armstrong and thought, you know what? Rather than playing to feet and taking the safe option, I'm going to try and bend him behind. And to be fair, Meslier does really well by coming up and, and, and heading it. But that was better from Bristol City, taking a, a few more risks, trying to play the bay forward. Offside flag goes up against uh, Yu Hirakawa on the left-hand side for Bristol City. So it's a free kick for Leeds. They've taken it quickly and out to this left-hand side and Sam Byram. Strike now being closed down by Earthy. It's rolled back to Melier. Thought about a left-footed clearance but knew he had time to set it onto his right foot. Although we're clear with his stronger left foot now. Onto Matteo Joseph who lays it off to Solomon. Space for Aronson in the centre circle to move at pace into the Bristol Sea half. Nonto up to the edge of the area, right-hand side. Bogle will pull it back from the dead ball line in winter corner off Luke McNally. There were a few arms going up, claiming offside against Bogle. Nothing given. Corner to Leeds United at 0-0. Yeah, never offside. Bristol City dropped far too deep. I mean, they pretty much were all in the six-yard box and that had allowed Jaden Bogle to be able to turn his back and still get in and earn his side of the corner. But again, good play from Aronson, driving with it and just leaving it to Willie Nonto and he played a really good ball to Jaden Bogle who just couldn't quite get the crossing. So Rothwell has another corner for Leeds where the Atiea stand meets the Dolman stand. Right-footed outswing to come from the Leeds number eight to around about the penalty spot, just drifts over the head of Roden and comes out to the left-hand corner of the box where Aronson checks onto his right, goes for goal, straight, and O'Leary, and he punched clear very awkwardly out to Tanaka, down by the dead ball line, left-hand side, gets the ball on his left, the cross goes over the top, can't hook it back into play, it's a goal kick, and Max O'Leary will have a goal kick, but not the greatest handling or goalkeeping from the shot from Aronson. Meantime, got team news from the the leaders of the championship, Sunderland, they're at home this afternoon to Oxford. Team news from Graham Courtney. Yeah, and starting with Sunderland, uh, Regis Labrice makes a couple of changes from Wednesday's 2-1 win at Luton. Uh, it's a big change as well. Actually, Patterson, the goalkeeper, he is injured, so that means that Simon Moore comes in. Alan Brown drops down to the bench. Patrick Roberts starts. As for Oxford, uh, with just one change, Dembele, he was injured in the draw against Derby County on Tuesday night. Their fifth draw in the row. Harris comes in. Got a fancy home win here, though. Sunderland against Oxford. Stadium light and wouldn't you know it Coventry City are now level with Luton Victor Torp the torpedo I think they're calling because he scored on his debut against Sheffield Wednesday in the FA Cup and it hasn't scored since but he scored now to make it 2-2 Sheffield United taking on Stoke this afternoon in the championship let's get team news from there Talk Sports Alan Biggs yeah there are changes in both there are three uh, for Sheffield United uh, principally the most interesting one Tyrese Campbell coming in for a start today up front uh, Vinny Souza returns Harrison Burrows is also back in the team those are the three changes and for Stoke they bring in Ashley Phillips Junior Shamad do a Vuta Berger and Ender Stevens. Ender Stevens returning to Bramall Lane to face his former club, who today say an emotional farewell pre match to uh, George Bulldog. That will be very powerful. Sheffield United versus Stoke City. Change being readied down beneath us by Bristol City at 0 0. Couple of changes actually. Uh, Fali Mayulu, who cost £3 million from uh, Rapid Vienna, hasn't scored since August the 17th when he got a couple of goals at the start of the season. And he's coming on for Yu Hirakawa. And the other change will see Elijah Morrison, an academy graduate, just 18 years of age. He's going to come on, made his debut in April as a substitute against Rotherham. It's going to be his first appearance of the season, and he's coming on for Mark Sykes. So changes are plenty out there. Morrison wearing number 31 on for Sykes. And we'll see where Mayulu goes, whether he goes to join Sinclair Armstrong up top or whether it's a slightly different system that they employ. But it's nil-nil. It's up for grabs this game with 12 minutes to go on Talk Sports. Salford have retaken the lead at Colchester in lead two. Kilian Kouassi makes it Colchester one, Salford two. It's a throw into Bristol City, midway point of their own half. Zach Viner has the ball in his hands, looking for someone to give it to. So this is the only game in the EFL lunchtime matches without a goal this one here at Ashton Gate Watford 1-0 up against Blackburn on Talksport 2 right now here is 
Oh, Sinclair Armstrong and Mayula leaving it for each other as the ball was floated down the inside right area. And then Tanner and Mayula getting a bit of a mix up after you, Claude, in terms of who wanted the loose ball. Leeds brought it away, but not for long. Throw in to Bristol City. And they're not quite on the same wavelength yet, Armstrong and Mayulu up top for the Robins. No, they're not. That, that's a classic example of two centre forwards that are almost thinking, well, hopefully if you take it, I can get myself in the box and get myself a goal. So you, you must split and forget about the most important part, which is the ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's a simple game. <laughs> Overcomplicated by egos at times, <laughs> right? Correct. <laughs> It will be interesting to see the dynamic there at Bristol City because they've got two big, powerful centre forwards up there now. Mm. I know Fali uh, Mayulu is playing more from this right hand side, and you've got Sinclair Armstrong who's playing down the middle. But both big, physical, powerful. Can they get all the ball? Can they really make Pascal Strike and Joe Rodham work? Do you know what I mean? Pull into the hold the ball up. You use their body, try and manipulate the ball. Throw in from Viner down the right hand side, but Mayulu couldn't keep it in play. It was really tight to the touchline by the time he brought it under control, and it just couldn't stay in. So Leeds will come forward again. Ten minutes to go on Talk Sport. There's a winner in this for either side. Remember, if Leeds get a, a two-goal win, they'll go to the top of the table at least for a little while. As you just heard that team news from Graham up at the Stadium of Light with Sunderland taking on Oxford this afternoon. Morecambe to Chesterfield for Armando Dobra. I think that's made the point safe for the Spyrites up at Morecambe this afternoon in League Two. Morecambe 2, Chesterfield 4. Cleared from hands by Max O'Leary for Bristol City, but Strike heads it back towards halfway. Good header on halfway by Bird, though. And then it was sent down the right-hand side from Tanner. A slip from Byram as you try to clear for Leeds United, and that gives a throw-in to the Robins, 10 yards inside the Leeds half of the field. Liam Manning directing operations from the edge of his technical area. Daniel Farkas stock still in his technical area just to his left. A Sinclair Armstrong tries to roll strike. He's gone to ground by the corner flag. In steps George Tanner to help out his teammate, but Leeds win it back. It's cleared downfield, but headed up in the air by Jason Knight. That drops at the edge of the Leeds box, but Tanaka heads clear. Cushion header from Naismith out to the right wing and Tanner. Good ball in field for Bird, but Bird's immediately closed down by Aronson, who's been really good in Leeds midfield at getting a foot in and winning the ball back in dangerous times and then there's a foul on Byron by Armstrong and Byron's stayed down flat on the turf he will pick himself up and the free kick's been taken already eight and a half to go Bristol City nil leads nil on yeah. talk sport yeah he's been very good Brendan Aronson as you said they're winning the ball back just drops into little pockets and as soon as Bristol City think they've got it he'll get his foot in there I mean he's given away a couple of fouls but defensively certainly from coming from a number 10 he's been very very good foul by uh, Morrison that time giving Leeds a free kick in the centre circle taken quickly Tanaka rolls it to his left for strike now it's picked up by Solomon Byram left hand side for the visitors has to go back towards the halfway line and strike and then Roden the other centre half Tanaka being faced up now by Jason Knight rolls away from the challenge and has to go back into his own half twisting and turning and looking for an option Roden calls for it and then slides it out to the right-hand side and Jaden Bogle. Bogle immediately closed down by Earthy. And again, Leeds have to build from their centre-halves at the back. Bristol City just pressing a little bit higher and higher up the field just at the moment, trying to compress the space. I think they have to, because if you allow Leeds to have all the pockets of space and you drop, drop further and further back, they can hurt you, Leeds. Dan James off the field, though that extra pace is no longer there Mayulu holds the ball up well on halfway wants it back from Jason Knight as he charges down the inside right position strike gets there first again gets a little nudge off Mayulu Darren Bent style as he went for it and then it's put out a play for a throw see, to Bristol City see what happens yeah. you get yourself a call you get yourself a throw on but again really unselfish run there for Mayulu who's probably tired he's gone toe to toe Pascal Strike and Jason Knight they're just rolling the ball down the line but make Leeds defend and, and this is what I'm talking about in these type of scenarios now you've got a throw in which is about what 10 yards from the box now try and get try and get a good bit of quality a little bit of passage of play and then get a good delivery into the box because you've got two targets there Patrick Bamford's going to be on in a minute for Leeds United just getting his number nine jersey on we've got six and a half minutes of normal time to play nil nil at Ashton Gate on Talk Sport Earthy can't control what was a very difficult pass to control 
from Naismith and Leeds have it back inside their own half with Tanaka lays it off to Rothwell and Rothwell will find Bogle on the halfway line he can move into the home side's half little chopping field to get inside the one defender then rolled it up to the edge of the area looking for Joseph but it went way past him and just rolled through to Max O'Leary nil nil it stays yeah right idea there from Jaden Bogle and he's been probably their, their, probably their main outlet now Sinclair Armstrong will pick it up left hand side oh well Morrison thought he'd won the ball fair and square from Jaden Bogle but he's going to get a yellow card the Bristol City sub I think he took ball and man as far as James Lennington was concerned as Bogle went down and Morrison is the first Bristol City player booked this afternoon nil nil yeah I did think that was a foul I thought Elijah Morrison I thought he won the ball fairly Jaden Bogle made a good challenge in the first instant because um, Sinclair Armstrong was in but he's made that challenge and as he's turned Elijah Morrison's almost blindsided him coming with the tackle I did think it was a book in but well the change for Leeds United we'll see Patrick Bamford on and you just heard his name Wilfred Nonto is the player that's being withdrawn to allow Bamford to come onto the field and Bamford seventh season at Leeds yet to start in the league this season nine goals in the last campaign as he edges closer towards 200 appearances for the Yorkshire club 25,283 inside Ashton Gate today ultimately nobody's going to go home deliriously happy as things stand but there's time enough for a winner here on TalkSport at nil-nil Leeds almost gave the ball away on halfway foot in from Tanaka made sure that there wasn't a counter but then Bristol City do win it back Earthy is dispossessed by Rothwell good work from Joe Rothwell and he plays a little one-two with Tanaka gets over the halfway line spots Bogle in space on the right and rolls him in Bogle bringing it forward Joseph on his outside slides it in to the right hand corner of the box it was an attempt to slide it across the face of goal by Aronson couldn't find a teammate but it is a Leeds throw nil nil yeah again Leeds is up in the pace a little bit trying to get the ball into to Bamford there didn't quite make it but then Brendan Aronson picking it up and playing to Joe Rothwell and it was good defending there from Bristol City but again asking them the questions making them defend Bogle tries to cross from 10 yards from the corner flag hits Earthy and goes out to play for a, another throw in to Leeds United looking for Aronson with a short throw down by the corner flag right hand side he finds Tanaka tries to give it back to Aronson bursting down the right hand side of the box but Morrison stayed on his feet good strength from the youngster and got it clear Mayulu tries to turn let the ball run across his body but strike steps in and win it, wins it back for Leeds United it's now laid off once again to Rothwell in midfield Byram out to Bamford on the left hand side gives it back in field to Sam Byron everybody for Bristol City pretty much behind the ball now as the ball's with Pascal strike Byron again teases it down the left flank Solomon runs into George Tanner Bristol City try and bring it clear who did that come off last of all came off a Bristol City player last says the referee so a throw into the visitors as time ticks down ever closer to the 90 minute mark 87 gone ball just volleyed downfield by Tanner for Bristol City nowhere near either Mayulu or indeed Armstrong but, but that's the thing for Bristol City now you've got two centre forwards up there you don't have to be as precise now it does have to be the perfect pass just mm. leave it to the areas not, not down the middle where Melier can come and get the ball leave it out wide behind the two fullbacks because you'll have Sinclair Armstrong you'll have Fali Mayulu getting after it and then will cause real problems here is Armstrong trying oh. to release Mayulu, Mayulu over halfway but Mayulu checked his run checked out when the ball was sent forward by Armstrong and it just rolls through to Melier. Chesterfield have a fifth at Morecambe. Morecambe two, Chesterfield five, Jamie Grimes. And Leeds coming forward with Byram. With two minutes of normal time to go on TalkSport. Game day exclusive. Byram looking for an option. Joseph comes out to join him on this near side. And he's opposite number 19. Tanner puts it out of play for a throw. I mean, there's a conversation going on between Sinclair and Mayulu. Well, Byron, meantime, is trying to backheel it for Solomon to try and work across him from this left-hand side. And he's been forced back, Manor Solomon, all the way back to the halfway line. The home, side, home fans enjoyed that. Tanaka gives it back to Solomon on the left-hand side. But again, 
the space is closed down by Knight and then Tanaka is fouled on halfway by Earthy but the referee says play on because Leeds have it and then it's deflected out of play by Max Bird sticking his foot in for a Leeds throw 0-0 Nil -nil, Darren Bent yeah Leeds again trying to be too precise I mean you, again you've got Patrick Bamford up there get the ball wide and, and cross the ball but Solomon gets it there and he takes too many touches ends up passing the ball back all the way to strike you might as well take a chance take a risk by putting a cross in Sam Byram again on the left hand side for Leeds Bamford in support tries to whip a ball in first time from the left hand corner of the penalty area he's gone out for a throw and he'll receive that throw quickly down by the corner flag from Byram gives it back to the left back now Tanaka Rolls the ball into the centre of the half and Rothwell up to the edge of the area. Rothwell got it on his left and got underneath the shot and it skied into those Leeds fans in the Atiyah stand away to our left. Goal kick, 0-0, nil -nil, 30 seconds of normal time to go. Yeah, the Bristol City there defending really well. And Joe Rothwell, I mean, the shot wasn't even on, but he probably thought to himself, why not? We've kept possession of the ball so many times. We've passed it from left to right. We haven't put a cross in. We haven't really made them defend. I'll have a shot of goal and just got the execution completely wrong. Still 2-2 between Coventry and Luton, but Tom Holmes has been sent off for Luton at the Coventry Building Society Arena. Watford still 1-0 upon Blackburn. In League One, it's still one apiece between Mansfield and Birmingham, and Reading 1-0 upon 10-man Bristol Rovers. Three minutes of minimum added time that we're into now at Ashton Gate on TalkSport Game Day exclusive. Foul given. Leeds United have a free kick inside their own half of the field, taken quickly by strike. Is there time for a winner? Is there time for one to be fashioned by other side? Solomon giving chase to a poor ball sent down the left-hand side by Byram. And Bristol City have a throw. Let's see how much ambition either side have got in these three minutes of added time. It's going to be interesting because I think Bristol City, I wouldn't say they're prepared for the point, but all of a sudden now they're just, you know I mean, not, not committed as many men forward as they were during the game. Whereas Leeds are dead, the ones trying to get on and win the game. They're commit, still committing men forward like Joseph and Solomon and Bamford's down up there. Aronson's trying to, to the create as well. Now a long ball over the top trying to get Mayulu in behind Rodan. He's defended that well. The Leeds number six volleyed downfield by Bogle, but he bounces once and through to Max O'Leary. Bowls it out over arm for Elijah Morrison who's just shy of the halfway line, can't get away from Aronson, but plays a neat ball infield to Naismith. Now Viner up to the halfway line, and Mayulu again trying to win the ball, but it's good foot in from strike that time. Played through the halfway line by Tanaka, but one back by Bristol City, and Morrison's away down the left-hand side, trying to get past Tanaka. Good, strong run from the youngster, Elijah Morrison. Can he get the cross in? Well, he tried, and he ended up putting it straight out of play for a goal kick as Coventry City looked to have won it against Luton Town in added time Hadji Wright the American making it Coventry 3 Luton 2 they were 2-0 down in that game boy he needed that Mark Robbins if they win it they needed that Hadji Wright could be the Mark Robbins to Mark Robbins <laughs> you know your football you know what I'm talking about Manchester United I know Dan don't worry <laughs> I know <laughs> You're so young. <laughs> Sinclair Armstrong, left-hand side. We've got a minute of added time to go. Armstrong, he's got his hands out. He's wanting an option. He can't find one. Slides it back to Viner on halfway. One last chance maybe for Bristol City to snatch all three points here in front of their own. Tanner, right-hand side, midway point of the Leeds half. Plays it into Burt. Back it goes to Viner. Flick from Jason Knight goes out off the head of Rothwell for a Bristol City throw. I don't know that this club have got a long throw specialist. Pretty much every side I know, mm. I think, has got a long throw specialist. But I'm not sure that Bristol City or Leeds have one, based on what I've seen today. And it will be Tanner to take the throw. Midway point of the Leeds half, near side to us as they attack the south stand. He's looking for Mayula down the right-hand side of the box. But Leeds get it clear. Joseph wins a throw off Tanner. And that is it. The full-time whistle has gone. And Leeds United have not been able to leapfrog Sunderland to the top of the championship table this afternoon. They take a point away from Bristol City. Both sides go seven unbeaten in the championship. Leeds United probably went closest of all with chances in either half. Max O'Leary made a terrific save from Wilfred Nonto in the first half. And then when Nonto beat O'Leary in the second half after a Dan James cross from the right, Zach Viner was there to clear 
off the line and Liam Manning back on an emotional day for him at Ashton Gate sees his team pick up another precious point to continue their unbeaten run but Leeds are not top Sunderland will still be ahead of the pile ahead of the three o'clock kickoffs full time at Ashton Gate Bristol City nil Leeds United nil